Hey folks, this is the quick version of how harp-like technology could be dangerous. Now it's all going to come together at the end, folks, so be patient. We're going to start with lightning. You ever been listening to AM radio during a thunderstorm and noticed harsh static every time lightning flashes? Well, just as there's an electrostatic beginning to that lightning, there's an equal opposite reaction in the form of Whistler waves, electromagnetic radiation discharged by the lightning event up through the ionosphere, plasmasphere, and magnetosphere. And it tends to scatter trapped energetic particles, pushing some to unusually low altitudes. Now you can see here the green line is one magnetic field line. The red lines of Whistler waves from lightning going up and causing the opposite flowing helix, forcing electrons to precipitate down along the magnetic field line, bunching at the bottom. And as you can see, regardless of where the discharge is relative to the field line, its energy is captured there and added to all the rest, having a cumulative effect amplifying the wave. Now, not only can electromagnetic radi uh, radiation redirect energy backward, like we see here naturally from uh, lightning, but it can be man-made propagated to the magnetic conjugate point on Earth. In the SIPL experiments, VLF waves were propagated from Antarctica to a receiver in Canada. Now, Stanford researchers discovered that this energy can be pushed along the Earth ionosphere waveguide to any point on Earth via a low-frequency receiver. And these things are all across the globe. Now Stanford's research continued into the currents that make the Northern Lights and is now one of the foundations of the HARP program. Now imagine this is not just a few instantaneous moments of discharge from lightning or some low energy man-made VLF transmissions like the SIPL experiments, but a high frequency propagator millions of times stronger. Now these things aren't as terrifying as they look, but they display the range of different electromagnetic effects that Tesla technology, scalar, a wave propagation can put out there. Now these perturbations are supposed to heat the D region of our atmosphere for study, but it is admitted that they have a noticeable effect on the other layers of our ionosphere as well. Man-made Whistler waves, just like X-ray flares and solar plasma, are threats because of our dependence on the status quo of our protective layers. Now the high frequency modulator at HARP and others like it all around the world increase the conductivity of the ionosphere by, among other things, scattering the auroral electrojet driven by Earth's magnetic field. Now Stanford claims that HARP is never turned on full power, and when propagating all the way through the magnetosphere only does so to the magnetic conjugate point in the South Pacific. They admit that they can, just say that they don't. And frankly, folks, if they wanted to, the whole world would know. Every magneto uh, magnetometer on the planet uh, would show it. Now, I want to talk for a moment about auroral particle precipitation. You know this as the northern lights. Now, a severe case of equatorial encroachment by the auroral oval interferes with the normal east-west signal pathways for VLF signals. Now, the stated purpose of studying this kind of thing is to ascertain and potentially warn against circumstances under which damaging currents might be introduced into the communication or power grids by strong auroral currents. Now, not only is an increase in atmospheric energy potentially devastating for satellites, but a grand aurora would be one sign that the power grids may go down. But what does this have to do with HARP, you might wonder? Well, two things. Because it feeds off the auroral electrojet, this means that a major CME or solar flare would make HARP potentially stronger. But then again, obviously, potentially more obvious as well. Now, the second and more concerning uh, issue would be the long-term cumulative effect of over-electrifying our atmosphere by propagating this electromagnetic radiation. Now, lowering the altitude of energetic particles, uh, juicing us up. When one of our main three worries these days is an electromagnetic event, we do not need to be creating an environment that invites auroral encroachment, geomagnetic activity from flares and CMEs, and other strong currents along Earth's field lines and potentially along the magnetic connections between the Earth and the Sun. Now, the F layer is a great place to gauge how ionized our ambient atmosphere is. Using the critical frequency of the F1 layer, we can directly gauge our conductivity, and combined with measurements of geomagnetic instability can provide a warning system ahead of visible auroras during significant space weather. Now, we have demonstrated numerous times how the anomalous nature of the current trends in F1 uh, critical frequency layers are right now. Now, we have seen only intermittent perturbations in the F2 layer and the total electron content. There is a cumulative effect that makes us more vulnerable to solar flares and coronal mass ejections. Now, our shields are still strong enough to keep us safe for now, but the sun is making the professionals' predictions look foolish uh, each day.
and we have 18 months until solar maximum and probably a year of high alert after that. If this is your first time here and you haven't noticed that the world around you is changing in terrifying ways, uh, please take note, volcanic activity over the last nine months is more than two standard deviations above yearly expectations. The decay rates of elements are changing, physics is changing, and the sun is the only player holding a card like that. Thousands of weather records have fallen in the U.S. alone, and collective conscious has begun to move toward a mindset of rebirth and new beginnings. This is likely not far from the truth, however you are interpreting it. Folks, many of you trust us from the Ellen and Nibiru days when we took a neutral observational stance on the facts and the controversy combined, and we told you not to panic and that fear was your enemy. Well, now we can say we have identified a potential weakness in the cocoon of safety woven around the human race, and she needs watching by all of us. Be safe, everyone.